need for work. We come again to do this together. It's not just me talking at you. So I invite you to participate by um, sharing in the responses that are in bold and marked with a C. Okay? You may remain seated through the service. There will be one spot where I invite you to stand as you're able, um, but otherwise you may remain seated. Uh, very, very um, awesome and cool. Kathy will be uh, going out to sea as her interment for her end wishes. Um, so today we will be having the service and then you are invited to go downstairs and have lunch and share stories and again, be in community together as she would love. Um, so uh, we will point you down in that direction after the service. Any other things you'd like me to share at the moment? All right. Okay. We begin. Welcome in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We're gathered to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our sister Kathy, to give thanks for her life, to commend her to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. In our faith, we believe that baptism can be imagined as wearing a garment of clothing. In Galatians, St. Paul refers to baptism as putting on Christ just like we put on a shirt. Kathy, in her baptism, was promised that this garment of Christ could not be removed, not even in death. Today, we place a pall on top of her remains as a reminder to us of Kathy's baptism and the fulfillment of those promises made to her when the water was poured on her head and the sign of the cross was placed on her forehead, forever sealing God's promise of eternal life. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. We glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. We praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. We worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. We sing together. Nearer, my God, to thee. And again, you may remain seated.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister Kathy. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until, by your call, we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40. Comfort, O comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass, their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me responsively in Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. You hem me in, behind, and before, and lay your hand upon me. Where can I go from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb.
My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! Our second reading is from Romans, the 12th chapter. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another, do not be haughty but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you as you're able to stand and join me in the gospel verse. If we have died with Christ, we shall also live with him. If we're faithful to the end, we shall reign with him. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in front of the door. And he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came, bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And once Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves, and he said to them, why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, stand up and take your mat and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, if I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. And Glenn, I welcome you forward. Thank you all for being here. I have a few words I'd like to say about my time with Kathy and how her life uh, interacted with all of you. I remember several times when telling people how Kathy and I first met, people would comment, uh, oh, childhood sweethearts, and I'd need to explain that 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 wasn't the case. We knew each other having been in the same Pennsylvania elementary school classroom from the second to the sixth grade, but if we had any conversations, I don't recall them. We went to the same high school in the same curriculum without ever having been in the same class. Once again, if we ever talked, I don't recall. That doesn't explain when a couple years later, we both happened to be visiting relatives 
in the local hospital. While Kathy was walking down the hall, she noticed me in my mother's room. She abruptly stopped and said my name, to which I immediately responded to hers, with hers. We had a short, congenial conversation and went our own ways. I think it's safe to say that there wasn't another girl from my high school class of more than 400 who had no classes with me and no conversations whose name would come out of my mouth without any hesitation. If I hadn't been so dense and shy, I would have followed up right there, but I didn't. I got a second chance a couple years later when Kathy's mother got the choir director's job at my church. At time, that time, Kathy was working in the Cleveland Clinic in Ohio, and I was working in Maryland. Each of us came home on some weekends, and because her mother was the director, choir director, she would attend my church service. We had a few quick chats at the end of the service before it all began. Once again, I had no preconceived notion to ask her if we could meet one Sunday afternoon and we could have a longer talk, but ask I did, and accept she did. We exchanged addresses, phone numbers, and I was done for. We had a long distance courtship, sometimes in Ohio, sometimes in Maryland, sometimes in Pennsylvania. And though we had little contact before we started dating, I think we both were comfortable with each other very soon. One night in her apartment in Cleveland, I had my first lesson on how to approach, approach a future opportunity or occasion with Kathy. I proposed holding her in my arms, and before the night was over, we were well into our wedding plans. I might have slipped up a few times in the ensuing years, but most times I didn't propose anything to Kathy unless I was prepared to jump into it immediately. Many of you know that my approach to life is more like flow with the stream, being aware of rocks or rapids ahead, and dealing with them as they are encountered. Kathy's is more like consult whitewater experts, ask for their best guide, take a seminar on rafting, and then sit in a proven, safest spot in the back of the raft. Different approaches but I like to think we complemented each other's methods, and the results were usually pretty good. I think the phrase work hard, play hard, described Kathy's approach to life. She took all different jobs, and many different jobs in nursing very seriously, and tried to do right by her co-workers. She worked some full-time, some part-time, but she was always conscientious. Her different jobs were on the hospital floor, in the emergency room, the doctor's office, urgent care, and with Shepard Pratt providing medication and healthcare monitoring to remote psych patients. Play was no different. She liked Broadway plays, ocean cruises, and warm beaches with boardwalks and shops. I liked them too, but I'm sure she would have liked them to have been more frequent. She also liked walking with me on the towpath over by the river, especially in the spring when we could identify the different flowers as they bloomed uh, from time to time. She was a loving but somewhat strict mother. Our kids knew if they wanted something outside the box, dad was an easy mark. When, when the kids went off to college, it was up to her to do the majority of preparation for trips to see them. That continued when they had their independent lives. She always tried to take as much food and anything else they could use with us. My only challenge was fitting it into our car. Kathy cherished our grandkids and spent as much time with them as possible given they all lived in North Carolina. She put a lot of time and thought into having some craft or activity ready to entertain them when they visited. In 2010, I had one of my previously mentioned slip-ups when I admitted the outside maintenance on our five-acre home was becoming a little much for me. The next year was filled with preparation for our next step in life. Kathy made sure I kept up the pace, and on Thanksgiving 2011, we moved into Greenwich Park learned our way around Hagerstown and, and adjusted to the fact that we didn't need to mow grass or shovel snow anymore. We didn't even need to wash the windows. Uh, we had free window washing once a year, but I doubt anybody thinks that Kathy was satisfied with one window washing a year. <laughs> the community was very welcome to, welcoming to us, and we easily fit in. From the time Kathy was first diagnosed, we had many offers of all kinds of community support. That support also came from other friends, our families, our Zion, and our Zion Church family. I want to thank all of you again for that. Most of you know that Kathy had 
to be doing something productive all the time. She did not vegetate well. She was always looking for something to create a new challenge or a need to be filled. She organized the community craft shows, scheduled visits by food trucks, worked with others to make welcome pack packages for new people moving into the community. And <clears throat> she, she would never take any money for things that she made. Uh, that would take the fun out of it, was what she would say. I may be prejudiced, but I think many of her creations were of saleable quality. I have a few of the items she made on a table up front, everything except the paintings uh, she made, including the cover on the table. Uh, if you haven't seen them on your way out, please take a look and remember the person who lovingly made them. I had a front row seat to this energy, creativeness, and concern for others in the last 53 years, trying to be supportive and not get in her way. She didn't need any extra encouragement. I know I didn't tell her off. She didn't need any extra encouragement. I know I didn't tell her often enough that I loved her, but I hope my actions gave her that assurance. Can anyone here guess what Kathy's favorite flowers are? I think a few of you know. <laughs> um, there are a few clues up front. They're an unlikely combination, sunflowers and thistle. I like to think of the sunflowers because they love the sun and present its image back to us when they bloom. And when they're done, they provide food for birds and other animals. Thistle is a hardy plant that is not glamorous, usually has to survive in poor soil, and receives no care from humans, but it bears beautiful purple blooms. And when they're done, the seeds flit off in the slightest breeze to start new life. I always think of Kathy when I see these flowers and reflect on her love, my love for her, and how she lived her life. So as Glenn and I spoke in preparing today's service, we are sure that many of you have many stories about how Kathy has touched your lives. So again, we encourage you uh, after uh, the service to come downstairs and have lunch together and continue to share those stories about um, who Kathy was to you and the ways um, she touched your lives. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As a pastor, I find one of my most important tasks is to help connect people to their identity and history of being God's people and why that matters for this world. We hold the Bible as primarily that place where we hear the early stories of God's people there are, of course, many more stories that have happened beyond these pages during those times and even since these writings. But these are the ones that we hold in community to be close to the beginning of what it meant to be God's people and how people were called to live in such ways that reflected they belonged to God. Now, why I'm telling you this is you might have been a bit confused when you heard the readings selected for today. If you've been to a few funerals, you might have thought that these are not the norm of what you're used to hearing. You might have been expecting to hear more about resurrection, perhaps an account of that first Easter. You might have been expecting some accounts of Jesus coming again at the end of time. You might have been expecting the new Jerusalem with its golden gates. Although sometimes the messages of those traditional readings we use at funerals are helpful and appropriate, sometimes other stories of our history as God's people resonate with how we remember and celebrate those we love and how we've seen God's work in them. So yes, indeed, we do celebrate the fruition of Kathy's baptism with God making her perfect and the gift of eternal life and presence with God for her. But perhaps for those of us here today, celebrating and understanding the gifts God gave us through Kathy and the example she provided in living as she did can
can be more helpful for us in continuing to live as God's people. Thinking of Kathy, the characteristics and feelings that come to mind are care, compassion, connection, nurture, passion, and welcome. From my own experience and from the sharing of others' experiences, Kathy was someone who cared deeply about people. Kathy was never just going to approach you on a surface level. She was going to take the time to take you all in and connect with you as much as she possibly could in every encounter. She was someone who was a listener and was compassionate and empathetic. When Kathy had her mind set on something, she would make it happen, especially if it was about making something safer or making someone feel more included and cared for. If she had a deep gut feeling, she was going to go with it, despite what others might think. She went above and beyond to connect people and share what was beautiful around her. If she found something good, she wasn't going to hesitate to share it with someone else that they might have the chance to enjoy it as well. The readings we heard this morning speak to me of all these traits that have come to mind when I think of Kathy. Their feelings God wished God's people to feel after they had had times of great discomfort, to say the very least, being exiled from their home. Their feelings God wished God's people to share with each other to experience abundant life together. Their traits that God called God's people to exemplify and how they interacted with other people, that people would be cared for and not forgotten. Their traits that evoked trust and hope in one greater than oneself to accomplish such tasks that God could do even more than we could. At the heart of all this is the reminder that Kathy indeed was a remarkable woman. She gave so much to every person she encountered. However, she did it because God called and empowered her to do so. Like God's people before her, she followed and exemplified what it meant to be in relationship with a loving God, that others might know what it is to be loved for who they are and be welcomed into living in an abundant life and community. Kathy lived her life in this way, trusting in God to do infinitely more than even she could imagine. And I do believe God did so, as evidenced by the many lives Kathy touched present here, and I know beyond. The hard truth to today is that cancer took someone who was doing some beautiful, loving work in this world God so loves. And we wouldn't be here together today, and Kathy would still be working hard caring for people and bringing people together if it weren't for that cancer. We miss Kathy. We miss her smile. We miss her discerning face when she was thinking a plan through. However, Kathy's work, although not in her physical presence, lives on. She has done as God called her to do and connected many of us. We've learned from her care how much we are loved and continue to be not only loved by her, but by our loving God. Her example has taught us how to care and connect and love others. Although we're not quite ourselves without her presence, we are at the same time better people than we were from learning from her example. May we each remember we're called to live in love and care as God's people, just as Kathy did. Although we may not get it right all the time, just as Kathy didn't get it right all the time, may we remember that we're called to keep living and loving as God calls us to. May we ask for and practice forgiveness when necessary. And may we trust that God can do infinitely more with what little we can do to make God's love known. Well done, Kathy. Blessed be the tie that binds us together. Amen. We sing together, O oh Master, let me walk with thee.
We respond to the word of God by sharing together in the Apostles' Creed as printed in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our prayers, each petition will end with me saying, God of mercy, and our response is, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Mighty God, in holy baptism, you have knit your people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. God of mercy, give courage and faith to all who mourn and assure and certain hope in your loving care, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy, grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that where this world groans in grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and life. God of mercy, Help us, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. God of mercy. God of all grace, we give you thanks, because by his death, our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also. And that neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us commend Kathy to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Kathy. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Into paradise may the angels lead you. At your coming may the martyrs receive you and bring you into the holy city, Jerusalem. May a choir of angels welcome you and where Lazarus is poor no more, may you have everlasting rest. Amen. Rest eternal grant her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, support us all the day long of this troubled life, until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes, and the busy world is hushed. The fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your mercy grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, a reminder. 
please come downstairs. When you go either doorway, we'll take you down the stairs and that'll bring you into our social hall. There are also restrooms downstairs for you to use as well. Thank you for being here today and thank you for supporting this family. Please receive the benediction. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in everything good so that you may do God's will working in you that which is well-pleasing in God's sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.